Hello, I'm Sean Hill. Thank you for joining today. My presentation will be an introduction to Ag WeatherNet's web services. We're going to go through things pretty quickly here, and you can see on the slide some of the topics we're going to hit just briefly on each of these. And if you have any interest or specific questions, you can hold those till the end. We'll have a couple of minutes, or you can contact me directly at email s e h i l l at wsu.edu. The Ag WeatherNet's website is weather.wsu.edu. Registration is free. You just need to pick a username, enter your first and last name, a little bit of information about your organization, and you'll be good to go. Uh, we're going to take a look at the data flow of a weather station from weather observations to your device that you view the data on, a brief discussion of outlooks and news mailings that we do, a quick look at how to get basic data out of the web page, review or look at some of the models that we can do, show you how to configure an alert or a favorite that can be sent to your email or text messages, a quick overview of the mobile platform that we've been working on, touch on API access, which is available for automated data access. However, there is a fee associated with that. And just briefly on future work that we're going to be pursuing over the next several years. To register, weather.wsu.edu. Here's a direct link to get into it, but you'll just have to pick your username, enter your email address, agree to the terms of service, and put a little bit of information about your organization. And we'll do a live demo of that in just a minute. The data. This is just a really high-level look at how the weather happens in the world. We have a weather station that observes the values of sensors out in that weather. For instance, a tier one station would look at the weather sensor every five seconds and convert that or summarize that as a 15 minute data record. A tier two station would look at the weather sensors every one minute and again, create a 15 minute data record that's pulled in through our data retrieval server, put into a database, which exists both in side of WSU and in the cloud, made available by web services over the internet to a variety of constituents such as you who are growers, weather enthusiasts, researchers, students, and more. There are also external data consumers such as the WSU DAS system or the National MesoNet program who also is interested in weather networks. Outlooks and news are something we publish on a somewhat regular basis. The outlooks are a look forward at what the weather might be written up by one of the meteorologists on staff and delivered to your email box, also available by visiting the web page and clicking on each and any of them. We'll also publish news about when interesting weather events or potentially actionable information is available. Basic data that we collect is again, 15 minute records, which can be seen as hourly, daily, monthly, even annual charts or, or tabular data. We can produce frost date reports and climate summaries of specific stations or summary reports for the entire network. We have various calculators on our, our web portal that you can use to accumulate degree days or evapotranspiration or precipitation, which leads into the models that we do support, some of which are, are listed here. There's others, but we do degree days, customizable, a water use or ET calculation. We have irrigation scheduling tools, models for cold hardiness of grapes and cherries and blueberries, apple pollen tube model, which helps uh, scheduling bloom thinnings. We have a spring wheat yield model that can estimate profitability per acre, uh, fruit surface temperature for apples to help prevent or intervene in a sunburn hazard situation. We also have human heat stress models that we're working on in collaboration with University of Washington. So that's an interesting project as well. Alerts that we can set up and be delivered directly to your email or text message include air temperature, humidity, soil temperature alerts, wind speed, rain, and again, this fruit surface temperature model is available as an alert. So almost all of the variables that we collect, you can set a high or a low threshold and be alerted when the conditions surpass or pass your threshold. 
what we call a favorite would be more of a report that you would receive on a daily basis. So if you were interested in uh, degree days over time, you might have that report sent to you on a, a weekly basis, keeping an eye on when frost dates have happened, again, evapotranspiration, heat index, or wind chill. There's also the summary reports, which are network-wide looks at the data. Our mobile platform that we've been developing is designed to be lightweight and easy to use and, and simplified compared to our desktop web portal. So you'll see things are designed in a fashion that you can just click and get what you need really quickly out in the field and put it back away and not have to dig too deeply. And we're looking at various ways to get as much information into a single screen that you can use at the point of decision making. Of course, we try to be aware of the various devices that are being used and, and design it to be responsive and format well to those devices. We are pushing towards model delivery on this mobile platform and allowing alerts directly to push to your device. API access is something that we have a lot of interest in, and I can tell you it's not free. Unfortunately for all of us, money makes it happen. So automated data access is based on a subscription. You can choose 15 minute or daily data. The fees are based on the number of stations and the resolution of data you choose. If you are a member who has added a private tier three station, you do get access to the API for your own station. And there is a Python wrapper available. And this is just a sample of data that comes out of the API and it's uh, JSON formatted. If you have more questions about that, get with me directly. Future work, we'd like to pursue five-minute data records for all of our weather stations to, to provide a higher resolution look at the weather. Additional hardware and vendors included in our Tier 3 network. The various models, we'd like to make that data available by API so that you can build on those models in, in the fashion you see fit. We are continue to enhance our quality assurance program with new algorithms and, and ways to identify identify drift and calculate, impute, or now cast corrected values as necessary. We'll continue to put the newest models as research matures onto our web portal and tools. And we have, of course, our, hopefully you've all heard of our towers that are going up as our tower network gets more mature, we'll include more inversion monitoring tools uh, that rely on that data. And we're going to hop over for a few minutes on the web portal and go from there. So here we are taking a look at our web page. Again, it's weather.wsu.edu. And to jump right into it, we're going to look at how to register. On the left hand side is this sign in button. If you already have a username and password, you just sign in right there. And if you're a new user, you can click register me and we'll fill in our weather school full name. We're going to have our email address, weather at wsu.edu, which is our general support email address. If you have any general questions, you can contact that email address and it'll get directed to the correct person. You select a username and a password of your preference and enter your organization, which for us is a 24 106 North Bun Road in Prosser, Washington at 99352. Accept the disclaimer in terms of service and let us know whether or not you plan to uh, provide information products to the public and hit subscribe. And there you go. You've got a username right here. You click login. We're going to log in. Weather School 2021 and our secret password to get us in. Sign in. And you'll see that now I can sign out and I have a couple of other things here. Alerts and favorites and tier three is all things that you can configure at your preference. And we'll take a look at those shortly. But first, let's dive right into the weather data. Weather data comes at the smallest increment of 15 minutes. We like to go ahead and choose a weather station, and I know that Benton East is nearby me. I have a date range and bam, tabular data. These are the 15 minute records that are observed by our weather station. And you'll notice down here, there's menu items. You can look at it in an hourly, daily, monthly basis. If you prefer as a chart or a graph, you can come over here 
and we have daily or hourly graphs available for you just by selecting these buttons. Further in the weather data, one of the interesting things at this time of year is probably for your frost dates. The frost date report can show you the entire period of record forestation. And this one goes back to 1995, it looks like. And we can see that the average last spring frost has been April 12th, and the average first fall frost has been October 20th for about 188 days of frost-free time at this Benton station. There's a few other things that are interesting to look at on this uh, section. You can get a climate summary, which will tell you the normals and extremes of the temperatures by month, as well as some trivia about this station further along. Calculators and models is what we're supposed to look at. Cold hardiness, again, at this time of year, is starting to become important. The most recent cold hardiness model we've done is for blue blueberries and we can look at the uh, seasonal view from September of 2021 through the most recent forecast, the minimum temperature that's been observed along with the modeled lethal temperatures. So if your minimum temperature reaches the LT10, we would expect about 10% damage, LT50, 50%, LT90, 90% damage. Grape cold hardiness is the oldest cold hardiness model that we've been doing. And we'll just take a look at the 2010 season. For Benton East Cab Sauv, you can see that in this time frame, looks like the end of middle of November, the temperature had a quick drop down and hit almost into that 50% damage, and it reached negative 4.7 on November 24th for this particular cultivar would estimate that you'd have some damage there. We also have other models, fruit surface temperature, powdery mildews, we're working on some mummy berry models, soil growing degree days, and then of course regular degree days, which most of you probably understand degree days, but you can enter your threshold values here and date ranges and it'll go out and pull the period of record for the station and you can map the imaginary average year against any of the previous years to get an idea of where we stand compared to this historic record. So you can see that for 2021, which is this top line, compared to the imaginary average year, it was a little bit more accumulation of degree days. The average would be 3,060, where the past year finished out with 3,405 accumulated degree days at 50 degrees temperature as a base temperature. So jumping straight over to how to configure alerts. If you need an alert, you can register and sign in at weather.wsu.edu. Over here on the left-hand side, clicking on alerts, you can configure, for example, a low temperature alert at my station that I've selected, Benton City East. I want to know when the temperature goes below 35 degrees. I'd like to be notified by email at my email address when the temperature crosses that threshold. When I hit save, as long as my alert delivery status is set to on, I will be notified when the temperature crosses this threshold. Likewise, you can do various other alert settings, wind speed, soil temperature, RH, even rain accumulation, and the fruit surface temperature model. We'll go ahead and look at favorites. Very similar if you'd like to have a degree day report or evapotranspiration report. ET report is the name I want to call it. I'm going to use my preferred station. Let's go ahead and find it. Benton East. I want to know the ET for the previous seven days. I hit save. And now at 5 a.m. every day, it'll send me a report that looks like this. It shows the accumulated and daily ET values. Finally, to look at our mobile platform. In the future, we plan to put our models and alert systems on here. But for now, we've really put a lot of time and effort into making an easily readable, quick to comprehend, 
chart that'll give you the current conditions and the past conditions all in one place. You can pick multiple stations and go through those in your device of preference. And this is really designed to be used out at the point where decision making is being made, be rapid to use and lightweight. And with that, if there's any questions, we'll be happy to take them.